is a microbot. Microbots. What is a microbot? More specifically, what is a micro robot? Most people just know it from what they've seen in the movies. Well, the first thing you need to know about a micro robot is it's very small. So we say it's sub-millimeter dimensions. So for reference, a human hair is about 100 microns in diameter. So the robots we're talking about here are very small. So about eight human hairs wide by about seven human hairs tall. Next thing you need to know about these micro robots is we want them to be mobile, to move around in the workspace. We want to be able to control them wirelessly, which is a challenge. So if you think about a large-scale robot, right, you can put a battery in this robot, power it up, and it goes on its way. But what happens if the robot's really small? Right, so you have a tiny little robot. You can't stick a battery on this robot. It's not going to work. So what are we going to do? Well, one thing we can think about doing is maybe we can give this robot a little hat. We can make it magnetic. And so if we stick a magnet in its workspace, it's going to be attracted to that magnet. So that's kind of the approach that we take here. Except we use uh, special magnets called electromagnets. So we can turn these on and off whenever we want to. And so we can surround the workspace of the robot with these electromagnets and control it to move in the plane. So one of the neat applications for these micro robots is in the body. The body has uh, lots of uh, sticky, rough surfaces in it. So if you wanted to just you know, pull our robot with our, our electromagnet, it's going to get stuck in that, in that tissue. So what can we do? Well, if you think about a car, if you want to take the car off-road into its rough terrain, we stick big, bulky tires on it, and it can negotiate that rough terrain. So we can try to do the same thing with our robots. So now we can give this robot some magnetic feet. And it's a little bit magnetic, different magnetic properties than the ones on its hat. And we can add some other electromagnets in the workspace. And we can turn these on and off now that the robot will now roll and tumble so like, and go over this rough terrain, just like an all-terrain tire. Once it gets to its target location, then we can then use it to inject some medicine to that target location. So that's the idea behind this microscale tumbling micro robot that we've developed. Uh, so it's about three human hairs wide by four human hairs long. And it looks like a dumbbell, and each bell is a magnetic body, but they're oppositely poled. So on one side, the north pole's on the bottom, the other side, the north pole's on the top. And it has two modes of operation. So for this tumbling mode, what we can do is we can turn an electromagnet on from the bottom, and it's going to cause the robot to stand up. We can turn that field off and put on some magnetic field from the side and cause it to tilt over. And then we remove that field, it's back on the ground. So now we can cycle this and get the robot to roll and tumble to its target location. Uh, it also has a second mode of operation, which is called a slotting mode operation. So in this case, once we get to our target location, we want to manipulate something there. So how this works is we, again, put a magnetic field on the bottom to stand it up. Then we can tilt it to the side. Rather than letting it fall back to the ground, we can, we can stand it back up again. And we can do this little stick-slip motion and then get the robot to kind of walk along the surface. And so here's a video of some of these robots that we fabricated in the lab here at Purdue. Uh, so again, they're about three human hairs wide by four human hairs long. And here we're manually controlling these electromagnets, tur turning them on and off to get the robot to tumble along the surface. So first it was on a silicon wafer. Here we're showing it on some biological tissue. So again, a sticky surface, uh, which you couldn't just pull this robot across it uh, without having this tumbling locomotion. Here it's going on top of a penny. So now these features of the penny are on the same size as the robot itself, and it's able to negotiate uh, that surface quite well. Uh, so then once we get to our target location, we want, may want to do manipulation there. So here's the slotting mode operation. So the robot's kind of walking across the surface. Um, and here you can see it you know, pushing a small little component um, in, the, in this test bed. We also had these robots go over different bumps. So here's traversing uh, different bumps on, in the workspace. So it's able to negotiate that uh, quite well. We also have these robots going up and down inclined planes. So we can go up and down these slopes. And we're also looking at alternative actuation techniques uh, so rather than tumbling the robot end over end, can we tumble it uh, the other way to get even, some, even more uh, neat uh, applications in mobility? So this application for these robots is inside the body, but there are other biological applications for these robots uh, which are outside the body and done in, in petri dishes. So when biologists use a petri dish, they gr they'll typically grow cells and they're all congregated into one area. So they would like to take one of these cells, move it out from that group, perform an experiment on it, or they would like to arrange these cells into a certain configuration for, uh, to grow a scaffold or some other tissue engineering applications. So when they do this, they typically use a probe and they will move, use the probe and actuate it to push the cell to where it needs to be and to, and to arrange it in some certain manner. 
Uh, one of the problems with this is that when the user does this, they have no idea how much force they're actually pushing the cell with. Um, so if you can, if they don't know how much force they're applying to the cell, you can damage the cell. So we'd like to be able to come up with a micro robot to help with these kinds of applications. Also, if you look at a, at, a, at a single cell by itself, it's a pretty neat structure. It has a nucleus in the middle of the cell, and it has a skeleton, which is called the cytoskeleton on the inside. And so if you push on this cell with a, with a probe and exerts a small force, the cytoskeleton will actually reconfigure itself to be stiffer where that force was applied. And so this is interesting. Uh, and, and so the study of these forces and how the cell reacts to it and develops is called mechanobiology. It's a very popular field. And so people are interested in trying to study this behavior. So again, if we come up with a micro-robot, can help with these applications, that, that would be great. Finally, if you look at two different cells, they say cell A and, and cell B, and you apply the same force to these cells, uh, they may deform or deflect in different amounts. And this force displacement relationship for the cells is called its stiffness. And so if we can have a robot to help us apply these small forces, we can record the stiffness of the cells and help to characterize them. So a normal cell will have a different stiffness property than, say, a cancer cell. And so which, how can we come up with a micro-robot to help with these uh, in vitro or inside the petri dish applications? Well, what we can do is we can add our, take our magnetic micro-robot. So if we have a magnetic body, we can control the position of it in the petri dish by turning electromagnets on and off. Uh, but now we need to be able to apply small forces and record those forces. So how are we going to do that? So we use something called a vision-based microforce sensor. So what this is, it's a soft, compliant structure. Um, and we know the stiffness of this device. So as it pushes on an object, it's going to deform. We can now observe that deformation with a microscope, uh, with a camera attached to my microscope. And if we know the deformation and we know the stiffness, then we can back out what the force is going to be. So here's an example of one of these robots. It's called the microforce sensing mobile micro robot. It's about 700 microns footprint, so seven human hairs wide, seven human hairs long. On the back end of it, you can see a little magnetic body, which, which we're then using with our electromagnetics to control its position and orientation in the workspace. The end effector, that little spring structure, is that soft, compliant end effector. And you see how, as we're, as we're pushing on this microsphere, our, our cell, is deforming. And we track that, and we can then figure out how much force we're using. So now we can make sure we're manipulating those cells very safely. We also can get this robot to move autonomously, so we can plan a path around obstacles in the workspace, so it basically gives itself little GPS coordinates. Then the robot then can follow these GPS coordinates um, autonomously and then get to the, the cell and then push it to its, its target location. And this works there's quite well uh, in this case, and here we're controlling just one robot at a time. So it would be really cool if we could control teams and swarms of these robots inside the feature just to have multiple of these robots working independently all at the same time. So how, how can we do that? Well, if we go back to our example with our electromagnets and our, and our robots, if we have, it, say, a team of three robots, and we switch these electromagnets on, all these robots are getting the same global fields, and so they're all going to do the same thing. So the question is, how do we get independent control of these robots if they're all magnetic? Well, what these electromagnets are are actually just coils with current running through them. So if we can take these coils and we can shrink them down to uh, the same size of the robots, roughly, and we can kind of turn them on their end, right? We can then arrange them on the bottom of a petri dish in a big array. And then depending on the direction of the current, how it flows through these coils, we can get an attractive force on the robot or a repulsive force on the robot. And then by, by planning that and, and, turn, and, and turning these on and off at the right time, we can then get uh, independent motion of these teams of micro-robots in, in, in that workspace. So we simulated this, this, this idea. Um, and here, you can see three robots um, being controlled by these, a planar array of microcoils. And we're able to get independent control of these robots. Uh, we can also use them for collaborative manipulation, so traveling in formations uh, to move different objects around in the workspace. So we've prototyped a system like this at the millimeter scale, where we have these coils, which are about four millimeters by four millimeters in size. And our robots are two millimeters in diameter. And we are actually able to get these robots to move independently uh, in this workspace using this technique. So we know this idea is going to work. Our true goal, then, is actually to move this not from the millimeter scale, and not at the millimeter scale, but actually use it at the micro scale. So how do we do that? Well, it's possible to make these, these micro coils you know, along the same size as the robot, about 300 microns in diameter. It's very hard to do. It's very expensive. 
So what can we do that's a little bit cheaper and easier, and easier to make? So if we want to use some standard you know, printed circuit board technology, instead of using micro coils, we can actually use micro strips of wire. And we can arrange them in two layers. And it works the same way. Uh, so now if we have current going in one direction uh, through one of these vertical coils, it can give us a force to the right on the robot. And if we change the direction of current, then it will give us a force to the left. And if we use some of the horizontally mounted uh, coils and micro strips of wire, we can now get, get forces going up and forces going down, depending on the direction of the current. And so by, by doing this, we can now, if we put two micro robots in the workspace, we can independently control their positions uh, in the workspace at the same time. And so one of the neat applications here is for advanced manufacturing. Uh, if you can then use these robots to assemble very small components, you can make really interesting devices. So we're working on um, some new 3D printing technology to make essentially micro-scale Legos. Um, and if we can, you can think of anything you think of you could make with these Legos, you, know, you, could, you can make here with this system. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, while this is, I think, a very exciting application, I think the more exciting and more impactful applications are the medical domain. And those are the ones that actually hit closer to home for me, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Uh, so growing up, I'm part of a, a big Italian family. Um, so this is a picture of me and all my cousins on one side of the family. Uh, this is at my grandfather's birthday party a couple years ago. We always have a great time when we're together. And usually the life of the party uh, is my cousin Joe, which you can see here next to me. Um, about four years ago, uh, Joe suffered a, a massive stroke. So a stroke is when you have a blood clot moves from somewhere in the body uh, into the brain. It cuts off uh, blood flow to the brain. If you're lucky, uh, you can get a drug and it can dissolve this, this, this clot or the surgeon, it's in a place in the brain where the surgeon can go in and remove it himself. Uh, in, in Joe's case, and other people's cases, it can be in a, in a deeper part of the brain where it's hard to get out, and then the people can suffer with this condition for quite a while. And Joe suffered about two years uh, before he passed away with this. Uh, so this is definitely an unscripted event in, in Joe's life and my life, but I think these events you can also use for inspiration and motivation. So now one of my goals is can we design a robot that we can use for the applications like this, uh, where the surgeon can't get out the blood clot, but the robot can can remove that uh, and help people like Joe uh, to recover and learn and return to a healthy life. Um, other interesting uh, medical applications that are there, targeted drug delivery. So these micro robots, remember, are very small. They're around the same size of, of cells and also tumors. Uh, so you can load this with drugs. If you can precisely uh, control where it's gonna go, you, you know it's gonna get to the, the tumor site, you can actually put a lot more drugs on this than you can uh, with how it's traditionally done, because those drugs, Traditionally, will get diffused everywhere in the body. So you can have higher concentrations of drugs getting to the target site if you can to be delivered with these micro robots. Hopefully, we get some better patient outcomes that way. Another application would be brachiotherapy. In this case, you have these radioactive seeds which need to be delivered uh, to the tumor site uh, for cancer treatment. Again, you can have micro robots deliver these to the, to the site rather than having a very invasive procedure done, uh, which is currently done. So hopefully, this can help with recovery and hopefully get better outcomes as well. You also can use these micro robots for biopsies. You, so you can add these little spikes or spokes to the end of the robot. You can then use them to travel inside the body, take a tissue sample, bring it out, and then figure out um, how, if it's can if a cancerous uh, tumor or not. And hopefully, again, less invasively than it's currently done right now. So I think the bottom line is these micro robots uh, offer unprecedented capabilities that you just can't get with these larger macro scale robots. Um, in the future, we hope to have these micro robots around the same size of red blood cells with onboard computers, cameras, intelligence, uh, arms, uh, hands, and all those sorts of interesting things so we could do uh, a lot of different healthcare applications. Uh, so hopefully you have a better idea of what a microbot is now, and you can be excited about these applications as I am in the future. If you can think it, the microbots can do it. The only limit is your imagination. Microbots. Microbots. Thank you.